Hello and welcome to JCLM Bible Study. And from today, we are going to start studying about or advanced studies in the deeper life by E.W. Kenyon. So, we are going to study the deep things of life or about life. We have received Jesus Christ into our life. We have received life, but now we are going to study about life. And the most important part of our study is God's Word. So I, I, I really want to request you as we start today's study uh, for you to have a notebook and a pen so, can, so that you can write some points and also write the uh, scripture. So after that, after studying, you can also go back and check or open those scriptures and see. I will be reading the scripture to you. You can see it on the screen also. But it's very important for you to go back and open the Bible and read those scriptures. If you have the Bible with you, that's very good. But the important part is for you to have the, uh, the pen and a notebook. So, as I've said, that we are going to study advanced studies in the deeper life. And the lesson one, the topic for the lesson one is the integrity of the word. So before we go there, I just want to encourage you, the more value that we give to the word of God, see, the more value we give to the word of God, the more manifestation of the word, written word of God, or I would say the promise of God will manifest in our life, will be manifest. I tell you, this word, God's word, what he has spoken is 100% guarantee to bring the harvest, to bring the fruit or manifest itself because, okay, so why did I say because, like number one, I would say because the word is God speaking to you. Remember that the moment you pick up the Bible and start reading, that's why it's very important to read the Bible. Because when you read the Bible, this word of God, when you read this, it is the word is or the word that is written in it, it is God speaking to you. I have said this many times. And I will say it again, that there are a lot of times we want to hear God's word, but we don't want to read God's word. So that doesn't go. But from today, when you know that the word or the Bible, the word of God that you are speaking or reading this, it's God speaking to you. Thus said Jehovah, or thus said God, is repeated over 2,000 times from Exodus, 2,000 times from Exodus to Deuteronomy. So when you go and read the book of Exodus to Deuteronomy, you will see there that it says, thus says the Lord. So that means that God was talking to his people. He was speaking to them. So he was speaking through prophets. That means he was giving his word through prophets, so the, the when the prophets was speaking or when they spoke, they said, thus says the Lord. Every time you hear, thus says the Lord, that means God was speaking through a man to the people. And today God speaks through his word. That's what we heard in the beginning. And he says, what I said, the word is God speaking to you. So we don't have to hear his voice or audible voice we should there are times that he speaks, a lot of times he speaks, but to be watchful about what he's saying is very important to read his word. So as I said, that thus says Jehovah or just thus says God is repeated over 2,000 times from Exodus to Deuteronomy. Said So another part, God and his word are one. I say it again, God and his word are one. There is no difference between his word, what he has written word, because this Bible, these words were written inspired by the Holy Spirit through his holy men. They, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit and it was, speak, uh, it was written. So today when we read this word, that means God and his word are one. There is no difference between what he says in his word or what he would have spoken, uh, spoken directly to you. Make that clear. I, I believe you're getting this now. The word is always now. See, the word 
is not yesterday. The word is always now. That means when God told, for example, when God told, uh, when Moses asked, uh, what shall I say to the people I got there? Who sent me? What did God said? He said, tell them, I am. That is, I am who have sent you. That means the word I am means present. It's not yesterday, gone. No, it's a present tense now. So when, when I said that God and his word is one, then I, I, before that I said that the word is God speaking to you. And when I, another example I said I am, that means when God is speaking, this word might be written or translated 2,000 years ago and uh, when, when, when the apostles, they wrote it and after that it was translated and, and written. But when you read it today, it is as, it, I would say this is the fresh manner for you. It is as fresh because the word is now. Praise the Lord. I believe you got that. Now, let's read the, the uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. Now, I'll read in this translation, um, a more for translation, it says here, The Logos of God is a living thing. I will come back, just read. Active and more cutting, cutting than any sword with double edge, penetrating to the very divine Dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, scrutinizing the very thoughts and concepts of the heart. Now let's go and see again. Uh, let, let me read in Amplified. Let me read. Just hear this one. It says here, uh, 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 Hebrews 4, 12. It says, for the word, see, I, I read the logos. I'll come back to that, but let, 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 let's listen. The word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul, and the immoral spirit and of joints and marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sniffing, analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purpose of life. Hallelujah. See, that's how powerful the word of God is. So let's go and read in, again, read in, it says, the logos of God, that means the word of God. That word logos is spoken word of God. That means what God speaks, what comes out of his mouth. And, and God is speaking even now when we read his word, he's speaking now. So what God speaks or the logos of God is living thing. See, that means the word of God, when it speaks, it is not dead. It is living, a living an active, it gives birth to something. Or for what is sent for, what is been spoken. See, it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, when we go there and read, write it down. John 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. See, it was referring to Jesus. It says the Word. Why it's referring in 14, 1.14, then it says the, the, the Word became flesh it was referring to jesus now what does that mean that means in the beginning god spoke that i will send hallelujah so god spoke about jesus and he was with in the beginning so that's what it says the logos the the spoken word of god is a living thing it's not a dead thing it's a living thing active see the word of god is active like uh, like the power in your house. The, the line is there. See, the power line is there. It is active. Only what you have to do, you have to switch on the thing. The, the switch, you have to put it on. And what will happen? It will, the light will come. So is the word of God. It is active. It is ready to do. And how you activate by your speaking, we'll come back to that too later too. We'll learn. So it is more Cutting, even the, it, the word of God is more cutting than any sword with double edge. So powerful, brothers and sisters, the word of God is that it cuts 
for both sides. If it goes like this, like for the, for if you, if you, if you picture a sword, a knife, uh, even a cane knife doesn't have double edged sword. It's only one side. But you just picture a sword in your hand or a knife in your hand that has been sharpened both sides. So what it does, when you cut the, the, when you want to cut something, it will cut like this. Even when you pull it up, if something is left there, it will cut. So those, that is the word of God that it cuts. Hallelujah. Penetrating to the very divine soul and spirit division. That means penetrating means what? Something able to make our way through into something. It is so powerful that it enters peace or uh, it goes right inside. Penetrating, it goes inside to the very division of soul and spirit. So you have to understand. There is a, we have a, we are a spirit, as we say, we are three pied being. So it's spirit which have a soul and lives in a body. So the word of God, even the soul and the spirit is so attached to each other, but the word of God, it goes between that. That's how powerful the word, the spoken word of God is. That's how powerful God's word is when he speaks. Then it says, even in, in division of, like it goes through, joints and marrows. Whoo, hallelujah. It goes right between the joints and marrows, scrutinizing the very thoughts and concept of the heart. When we hear this word scrutinizing, that means examines and inspect closely and thoroughly. You know, when there is a crime happens or something happens, you inspect. Or somebody wants, if you know that somebody is telling lie to you, your children telling lie to you, what you do? You ask them questions slowly, one by one, and then you'll know their answer. Why? What are you doing? Inspecting them thoroughly. That's how God's word is. The, 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 even your thoughts, God's word knows your thought. Whew, how powerful is that? Now, now, let's notice carefully the next verse, what it says. It says, and... No, 13, I'm reading 13, 4, 13, and it says here, no created thing is hidden from him. From whom? From the word of God. No hidden thing is hidden from God. All things lie open and exposed before the eyes of him with whom we have reckoned. Or, or, or with whom he has saved, we have come to him. So there is, that means, no created thing is hidden from him. That is everything from the beginning, the day that God created everything is not hidden from him. Everything, God can see it. Hallelujah. Praise God. The word is called Logos. As we have said about Logos, Jesus is the Logos and the Logos is a living thing. That means when, when we speak about this word of God and it also says that Jesus is the word of God. So the word, the logos is a living thing. We have heard that before, while I started. That means when it refers to Jesus, Jesus is not dead. He was resurrected on the third day. That means he is alive. When, when we see that, that means Jesus is living and logos is a living thing. Not in the book. Remember God's word is not in the book not written on the page, but in the lips of believers. That means God's word, that written word of God, it, 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 it's not, should not be only in, on the page, in the book, but it should be in our lips. Because the words that we speak, it is life. That's, God, that's what Jesus said. The words that I speak, it is life, spirit and life. So that, that means that it should, it should be the word of God where it should be. It should be in the lips of the believer. How can it can come into the lips of a believer when this word will be in our heart? Because we have heard that in Matthew, what is in your heart, it will come out of your mouth. Hallelujah. So if God's word, the powerful God's word is in your mouth, uh, in your heart, it will come through your mouth and it should be in believer's lips. There is no created thing Hidden from him. Hallelujah. This living word. The word searches us out. Finds us. This paragraph. Hallelujah. 
when we read this paragraph and when we study this carefully, chapter 13, it will open our eyes that God or His Word is always living and is looking at us. We are not hidden from Him. We can't hide from Him. We can't hide from Lord Jesus. We can't hide. So that's what it means, the integrity of the Word of God as we are studying. So even when we see the integrity of the Word, what does integrity mean? The quality of being honest and having strong moral principle. So whatever I just I've said, we must understand when we talk about the Word, when we're talking about the Word, the written Word of God, and when we say about the written Word of God, the living Word is Jesus Christ Himself. Amen? So that means the quality of being honest and having strong moral, moral uh, principle, the state of being whole and undivided, the condition of being unified, firm adherence to a code of special moral and artistic, uh, artistic value. The quality of state of being complete. So when we hear this word integrity, we can also say uprightness, incorruptible, un, uh, an unimpaired, conditioned, good character, principle, sincerity, and truthfulness. So integrity is righteous, is truth, is powerful. Hallelujah. Praise God. So as we go further, what does the word doing to us? So what this word will do to us or what is doing to us? So quickly before I end here and we'll continue next week. The word is our contact with God. His word is contact with God. We are convicted by the word. We are recreated by the word. And we, we will go slowly and learn all those things. Our minds are renewed by the Word of God. We, uh, the Word is indwelling in us. It stays in us. We are built up by the Word. We are healed by the Word. And we know the Father through the Word. Hallelujah. Even faith comes by the Word. And the Word, when it is in, on our lips, it is living. Amen? Word on our lips brings life. And also we feed on God's word. Hallelujah. So these are the things that we will see from next week. But I want to encourage you. Go and meditate on Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. And 13. And you will understand when you see that word, logos, or you, when you see the word of God, remember that it is the written word of God and also it directs us to Jesus Christ as a living word of God, a living God for us, a Lord that is living. Amen. So I'll end up here and, and oh, let's pray before we end. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and I give you praise, Lord. Father, I thank you for giving us the spirit of wisdom. And, and, and also uh, revelation into mysteries, almighty God, flooding our eyes with your understanding to see how powerful and truthful is your word, almighty God. So I thank you and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Till we meet again, remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. Bye-bye. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jcln.org or you can like our Facebook page Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram JCLMPG. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel JCLMPG to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry. If you'd like to host Brother Brian for teaching and ministering at your church or host a conference, you can contact our church office 3315202.